basically, or uh, science can be misused, uh, you know, for example, by people who have access to mass media mm -hmm. or politicians to be able to uh, accomplish their own agenda. Well, in terms of, of dietary concerns, I'm sure there are a thousand different things that uh, initially people thought were very healthy to eat. And only after there was extensive testing did they figure out that that there was actually something dangerous about certain foods, sometimes because of the way they were prepared, sometimes because we didn't realize that that pesticide would have a negative effect in the long term. You know, they may have tested a food with a particular pesticide and, and determined that after five years there were still no negative effects. Then they discovered that after 15 years there were some negative effects. And so then we had to go back and say, no, we thought it was okay, but it's not. We need to stop doing that. You know, and those sorts of changes happen a lot when you're dealing with science and technology. Right. Uh, science changes, and what we can see is that it's part of nature as well to be changing, and mm -hmm. its universe is dynamic, is emergent, and we should be embracing change. We shouldn't be... Um, telling ourselves uh, let's hold on to the beliefs um, just because it's mm -hmm. the best thing to do in order to, uh, because we're fearing the implications of that change, we're fearing what our peers might say, and it might change a lot of our standard of living at that yeah. particular moment. And in that sense, you know, the, the ego <coughs> has to be willing to accept both facts that I may have benefited from this, but I have now discovered that it's hurting people, and I need to accept that it is hurting people enough to let go of the benefit and do the right thing mm -hmm. and find a better way to accomplish that end. Right. The, the way that we deal with being wrong has to change. Mm -hmm. We must start celebrating uh, the fact that we can be proven wrong, um, it, because it's elevating ourselves to a new higher level of understanding mm -hmm. of how we are exactly. part of exactly. this nature. Uh, I think too often, uh, in, still in this day and age, people get stuck in blaming. You know, something goes wrong and they spend so much time dealing with the question of whose fault is it, instead of saying, it doesn't matter whose fault it is. What is important right now is that we figure out how to fix it and we find a better way to do this so that we don't create the problem again. Exactly. Yeah. Instead and of wasting <coughs> time on whose fault it is, just how do, what do we do to make it right? Right, and to add to that as well, we have to change the way in which we um, tell new ideas or tell people or correct people on new ideas is no longer acceptable. It was never acceptable just to go, hey, you're wrong, and then make them feel stupid mm -hmm. because they didn't know that knowledge. Yeah. It, it's not about uh, venting your, uh, your disappointment on someone because they were wrong. It's about making things right. Exactly. You know, which, on the point of technology, uh, in the present age, we're dealing with an economy that is so capitalistic that uh, money determines far too many things, and too many people have forgotten that it's people that are most important. And economies are designed to serve people, not vice versa. Not people living to serve an economy, but the economy existing to serve the people. And so in a resource-based economy, we're looking for a way of taking the resources and distributing them to people in need so that everybody has enough. But the challenge when we throw technology into this is that in the present age, it is so controlled by money. If, you, if someone doesn't have the money for a computer, for example, they don't have access to the technology. Right. Uh, so as a society, it seems to me we need to be much more proactive about getting the answers that work into the hands of everybody. Right. It's about uh, giving access to technology to everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, imagine being inclusive. Right. Being inclusive of everyone. Uh, because imagine if, yeah, let's imagine, for example, Beethoven, uh, mm -hmm. if he Beethoven, were... Beethoven, the, the musical composer. Right. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, imagine if he were born before piano was ever invented. Okay. Uh, I imagine Van Gogh uh, being born before cheap oil paints were invented. Yeah, if what he couldn't a afford loss. the paints, or if Beethoven didn't have a piano, we would not have the the artistic cultural uh, treasures that we have right. now. And at this moment, I'm pretty sure that there are thousands or millions of kids being born in which the technology for their self-expression has not been invented yet, mm -hmm. and uh, or it's not available to them for not accessible, reasons. right? You know, and, and that may that's where I'm forever encouraging those who have uh, abundant financial resources through whatever means, instead of finding more ways to spend it on yourself, invest in your world. You know, make sh invest in uh, every child having access to the technology they need so that you may be nurturing the next generation's Michelangelo or the next generation's Leonardo da Vinci. You know, by giving that nine-year-old Leonardo da Vinci the tools he needs to create something that everyone's been waiting for. Right, and you, we never know uh, how technology will move. And mm -hmm. we have seen um, that technology allows us to do things that humans by their body alone cannot do. Mm -hmm. We use technology today to be connected to people that live thousands and thousands of miles away. I've parent, I have a parent that lives in in Thailand, and mm -hmm. it would be impossible to be able to connect with him if the, I didn't have the technology accessible to me. So you that mean, as far has as like a telephone conversation, right? Exactly. Okay. That has or the internet, uh, for example. The internet, uh, mm -hmm. right? And that has reached enriched my life in, in in a way. Which, of course, the internet is evolving so fast in the present time. Uh, I have no idea what it will look like mm -hmm. even five years from now. Um, and you know, now we talk in terms of websites. Maybe five years from now, it'll be something more basic, where we don't have a website address to remember anymore. We just have a, a name, and the computer finds it. You know, uh, I mean, there's all sorts of ways that the process could be simplified. Right, and actually, it's already being simplified. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or getting beyond the keyboard to where we're talking to the computers, just like they do on the Star Trek television series. Exactly. No more typing. <laughs> Uh, wouldn't that be something?